Hello and welcome back to Cycle Fab. I have some slightly disturbing news. Now, the tank came out just fine. I'll get with y'all in a moment on that. But in reassembling my bike, I left the ignition key on. So I burned out both of my coils. Anyway, I tried to rush it and tried to fix it with a coil that I had in the back room, but nah, that didn't work out either. It was also burned. But just a quick note, and I knew this beforehand, but I'm letting all you new guys out there and even the experienced ones that you can still forget and leave the ignition on regardless of how much experience you have with motorcycles and burn your coils up. So anyway, let's get on with the painting part. The bike won't be started today, although I do have some new coils coming in and hopefully, fingers crossed, next video, this guy will be up and running and I'll give you a demonstration. But needless to say, the paint came out excellent. Take a look. Now that did not come out too shabby. The clear coat did just what it was supposed to do. The Rust-Oleum did exactly what I wanted it to. Besides just saving me money, I mean it actually came out very, very nice. And you see some fingerprints on it. <laughs> That's from me. Black is one of the most difficult colors to do, from my understanding. And I chose it because, well, I, I think your first bike should be black. <laughs> ah, black is a beautiful color. It's just overdone a lot of times. Now, these decals here, they come from the same guy that assembled this engine, Ironhead Cycle. And they do a fantastic job. Uh, these decals are extremely durable. These are some of the best decals I've ever used. They're not flimsy at all. Now I did clear coat over this uh, because they suggest that I do and also it just looks better. It blends in more thoroughly with the surface of the tank. Then you come back and wet sand over it and then buff it in. Now I can feel a slight edge on it but not that much. I could go back and put more clear coats on it. I did two clear coats, let it cure, I wet sanded it, and came back and sprayed two more clear coats on. You never want to spray more than two clear coats at one time is what I have found in my research. Some people, uh, they try to spray like three or four, maybe even more than that, clear coats at one time. In other words, you spray a coat, it gets tacky, you spray another coat, it gets tacky, you spray another coat, it gets tacky. Well, you're not supposed to do that. And you do two coats, let it cure, come back and spray two more coats if you want multiple coats. In other words, more than just two. So that's the advice that I followed and it worked out well. Yeah, you can really see the light shine off of that. But all in all, the tank came out just excellent. Uh, almost near perfect. I do have a couple of little hickeys in here. I don't know if you can see it. Right above this emblem, there's a little dot, a speck of debris that got up underneath the clear coat. And right in here, you can see just a little bit of a dimple right there and all in all that's it that's the only hiccups i have on it that i can see but from the makeshift paint booth that i use which is you can see it back there in the background uh, which is basically just plastic and shower curtains that i duct tape a alcove out of for a petition uh, that it works pretty well but I really wanted to show you guys the bike and it running and all this good stuff. But that's not going to happen in this video. But I can kind of show you a close-up view of the bike. And I'll give you a little rundown. That's a 1964 drum brake. And I made that to a 
believe it's a 91 or 96 Sportster front end onto a 73 iron head frame and that's a 74 iron head engine. And I did everything myself, all the machine work, all the polishing. The only thing I did not do is motor assembly. And again, that was done by Ironhead Cycle in Justin, Texas. That's just north of Fort Worth. And the guy is thoroughly trained in Harley Davidson's by Harley Davidson factory back in the good old days. Now, I'll go over in more detail with you guys. I just wanted to get with you and give you a short video of what's going on with this bike. And that the paint did come out awesome, <laughs> really. I, most people use peanut tanks, and I bought a peanut tank to use on this. Uh, you can see it in the other video, and I just couldn't do it. I just, I hate being like everybody else. And, I, not that tear duct, I mean, peanut tanks look fine on these, but this tear duct tank uh, just looks really, really nice. I mean, it just really flows with the lines of the frame. It flows right down into the frame, right out the end. It's just fantastic. Now, it was too wide. I did have to narrow it two inches. Uh, but that came out well. No seams, no hickeys. I, I say it came out well. It came out well this time. This is the second time I painted this tank. Uh, the first time, paint came out great. I just had a small, small fuel leak right here. Just a seep. And that was because I got in a rush and I didn't pressurize the tank. I didn't check it for leaks. Well, I'll take that back. I, I did check it for leaks and I didn't put any pressure behind it. Therefore, it didn't leak. And anyway, going down the road, it finally developed a leak, so on and so forth, and uh, ruined the paint. But anyway, we're back here. It's back on the bike. Uh, it's pressure checked. It's lined with epoxy, Caswell clear coat. You can go back and see these videos. And I have thorough faith that it is going to come out just fine once I get it on the road. It has fuel in it right now. I was all ready to crank this baby up, but uh, it said, no, I'm not going to do that because your dumbass left the key on. Now I want to show you my electronics box as long as I got it open. Get a little light in here. That's the brains right there. That is an immunit. And I just absolutely love that thing. Made by Moto Gadget. No fuses. Well, I have one fuse on it. The main fuse right there. Off of the battery. Now the battery's out. I use an anti-gravity battery. I've got it on the charger. But it, those things are just a dream. Yeah, they're expensive, but my God, it makes it so much easier to wire. Okay, guys. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Sorry it wasn't longer or... So I didn't have more content in it where I'm actually riding the bike, cranking it up, and going over it in more details along with what I did with the tank. Uh, but, you know, things happen and you learn from your mistakes. So remember, always either disconnect the battery or just take the key out of the ignition. You know, it, it, it saves a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of headache, because I'm having to buy new coils now. Those are brand new coils. I have uh, roughly 300 miles on them, just breaking this thing in. So, yeah, I'm out, you know, two Dynatech coils, and you know those things are not cheap. Anyway, if you like the video, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and I hope to see you guys back here next week. So, Cycle Fab out. Take care.